the DuPont Theater. Brought to you by DuPont, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Nearly everything in our daily lives is improved by chemistry. From transportation to the clothes we wear. Chemistry helps bring us better food, makes our homes more beautiful, more comfortable, helps protect our health, and adds to the enjoyment of our leisure time. Now, tonight's story on the DuPont Theater. pesky birds with their singing. <laughs> it ain't no laughing matter, it ain't. At night, I can't get to sleep. I lay awake all hours listening. Listening to what? To the silence. That's what. Out here in the country, it's so silent, you can hear an ant breathe. Comes the first crack of dawn, and then pesky birds start to screeching again. Mm. Oh. Mom, you'd think I'd committed a crime moving you out of the Bronx. It's just that with you so far away, I... I worried about you. Oh, I'm not an invalid. I'm a hale and hearty woman. Oh. Oh. Mom, please sit down. I'll get your coffee for you. There you see. You treat me like I was a cripple. Well, you forget you're not as young as you used to be. I've been making my own breakfast all these years, and yours too. And your father's, when he was with us. So if you don't mind. Oh, hush, hush, hush. Mom, please. You know I always walk around with my first cup. Yes, I know. You'd better hurry up and get dressed. And why should I get dressed if you don't mind my asking? I ain't going nowhere that I know of. Because that's why I came over. Fuller has to run some errands for me. And I thought he could take you for a ride if you'd hurry and get ready. Huh. And where would I be riding in that broken down truck of his? Well, through the countryside. It's a beautiful morning. Oh, back in the Bronx. That's where the morning is beautiful. And Bertie O'Connor screaming at her husband and the kids shouting down on the streets below and the subway making the whole building shudder every few minutes. <sighs> when did you say he was coming? Any minute now, so you better hurry. And no nonsense about tricking him into taking you to the Bronx because I've given him strict orders. Bye. I've got to go. Got a busy day. Goodbye. Giving them strict orders, has she? Well, we'll see to that. I'll be with you as soon as I find my purse. You know, I've been thinking, Mr. Fuller. We might visit the old neighborhood. Just for an hour or so. You know, just to see who's there. But uh, I know Anna's giving you strict orders. You're right. She has. Of course. Um, what she don't know won't hurt her. <laughs> Will it, Mr. Fuller? You're wasting your breath, Mrs. Dolan. Well, I wouldn't think to suggest. Not with Anne giving you strict orders. Well, it's for your own good. Besides, she thinks it's too much excitement for you to visit the old neighborhood. It is. It is indeed. The way it brings up the past and all. Ah, oh, there it is. Hiding under a pillow. Well, let's be off for our drive. Are you a religious man, Mr. Fuller? Well, maybe I am, and maybe I'm not. It, uh, it depends on what you're getting at. Oh, for sure you are. And I know you'll understand when I tell you that today I have a churchly feeling. You know, some days are made for confession. A day like this, I could light a dozen candles. Well, if that's what you want. Maybe I could drop you by the church in town while I run me errands. Well, I didn't mean the church here. It was my old neighborhood church I was hankering after. The one I went to when I was a little girl, where I was married, oh. where Anne was baptized. Did I ever tell you? My mother's name is on the stained glass window. This early in the morning, the sun would be shining through it like a blessing. Nothing doing, Mrs. Dolan. Why, that's an hour and a half drive. And besides, I gave Mrs. Malone me word. 
Why, why, if she was to find out... I know, she... she'd skin you alive, that's for sure. Maybe you could tell her that uh, I talked you into it. No, I couldn't. Because you haven't. <laughs> Mr. Moran. <laughs> Bertie. Oh. <laughs> I want my coffee hot. Oh, oh, oh. Why, Bertie, just come with the word of your arrival this minute. But the coffee will be ready in the jiffy. Sit down, sit down over there. I hear your daughter married very well. How is she? Quite well. Better than any of mine. She took you off to live with her, huh? It ain't the blessing that appears, Bertie. I'm like a fish out of water. I miss the old neighborhood. It's got so I hardly know anyone on this street anymore. Oh, it's changed all right, all right, with people moving away and others moving in. Well, I hope it's hot enough for you. <laughs> you know, this place of yours is like, like an island. Like an island of strangeness. And we all cling to it. Just now I was by the church and I said a prayer for all of us. Oh, oh thank you, Mrs. Dolan. <laughs> Did you see Father O'Brien? There wasn't anyone there that I knew. So I just paid my respects to the Lord and took another look at my mother's stained glass window. And here I am. Poor Father O'Brien. They've got him studying a foreign language at his age. Well, why should they be doing that? To understand the confessions that he hears. A lot of Puerto Ricans have moved into the neighborhood. A family of them are living in your old flat. Who? A family of Puerto Ricans. Well, it's a good flat. I was sorry to leave it. Oh, here's where you are. There's a poor soul out there driving up and down the street in a truck. That'd be Fuller. I'd give him the slip at the church. <laughs> He's looking for you. He even asked me if I know where you were. Why don't you go out there and let him find you before he has a stroke? And uh, how do you do to you, Mr. Moriarty? Without even a hello or a goodbye, he's leaving. Mm. Hello and goodbye, Mary. It's not out of disrespect that I'm so forgetful. I have problems of my own. Oh, you're looking fine. Country air seems to agree with you. She says she misses us, but she's as happy as a bird. And why shouldn't I be? With nothing to do the whole day long but enjoy the scenery? You'll see what it's like when you're retired, Mr. Moriarty. All I gotta do is coast for another month or two and I'll be on the pension. But you don't see any smiles on my face. There's some kids living alone in that old flat of yours. I'm going over there now. I'm going to have to take them into the welfare. Welfare? Oh, they'll be fine to them. They feed them, take care of them, and find them a home. They don't know that. They'll be frightened. They'll start crying. Then what will I do? I'd like to look the old place over. Would it help if I went along? It would be easier to have a woman along. If Mr. Fuller should appear looking for me, tell him I won't be long. Be seeing you, Bertie. Well, here we are. Her parents were killed in an automobile accident. They've been living here with an aunt. She disappeared. Listen. Hiding they are. Hello, Juan. Ah, there's no need to be afraid, lad. She's a friend. She used to live here. Can we come in? What did you say his name is? Juan. Better be John in American. It's a good name. Well, my name is Dolan. Mary Dolan. Where are your brothers? You can bring them out now. It's all right. She won't do them any harm. Is she from the welfare? Oh, no. You might say I'm a neighbor who just dropped in for a visit. You know, I used to live in this flat. This was the parlor. My, what changes they've made. Come on, get the boys on. Felipe. Felipe? Would that be uh, Philip? That's right. You see, she can almost speak your native tongue. Pepe. Oh, my. Oh, what a little fellow. And how old are you? He can't speak English. He only knows one word. New York. Say New York, Peppy. He don't feel like saying. Peppy? What would that be in American? Now, that's what I've been trying to find out. <laughs> Felipe? Now, what have you got to say for yourself? Felipe and Peppy only speak Spanish. 
Just the same. I know you're going to grow up to be fine citizens. We're already citizens. All Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Without even speaking American. Ain't that grand? Mary, tell them how it is and what I have to do. Look how scared they are. What do you have to do? Well, Juan, you've been living here alone with your brothers and I've been letting you because I was hoping your aunt would come back. She will come back. I know she will. No, I ask a lot of questions and I know she won't. The only thing that's left for me to do is to turn you over to the welfare agency. No, this is where we live and this is where we'll stay. I'm sorry, lad. But there are laws. Wait a minute, Tim. They're afraid they'll be separated and they want to stay together. That's right. What she says is right. Oh, there must be some other way. Take your own sister, Kate. When the Sullivan boys were found homeless, what did she do? She took them in and brought them up like they were her own. And every one of them turned out fine. But times have changed. And there aren't any people like my sister Kate anymore. Oh, don't you be afraid, Peppy. You're not going anywhere you don't want to go. He don't understand. He understands. I can tell by the eyes of him. I never had any boys of my own. Now I've got a whole family of boys. Mary, darling, don't you be going raising hopes that you can't gratify. I may not be your sister Kate, Tim Moriarty, but my heart is as big as hers ever was. They're all coming home to stay with me. Don't listen to her, Juan. No one can take you without permission from the welfare agency. It's the will of God. I was moved to go to my old church and to see my mother's name on the stained glass window. What are you talking about? You come back here every time you get a chance. By the greatest accident, I saw you. Accident? You'd have to close your eyes to avoid seeing me. It was providence. Providence? Don't you see God's own hand in this, Tim Moriarty? Saying, Mary Dolan, I'm putting these boys in your care. But you're not in her care. You're in the care of the welfare agents, and remember that. But their hands are filled. Heaven knows. No. You're going home with me. You tell your brothers, Johnny. I'm taking you all to my place in the country. La buena señora dice que nosotros vivamos en el campo con ella. Es que vamos a estar aquí. What's he saying? They like this house. This place. I tried 40 years to get out of here. Tell them, tell them we'll live in a big house in the country with a nice yard with trees that can climb. La buena señora tiene una casa grande con árboles para jugar nosotros. No quiero. Uh, tell them, uh, tell them I got a television set. A television set? A television. A big one. Uh, as big as this room. A television muy grande. Oh, está bueno, muy bueno, muy. Mary, Mary, it's not that I don't approve of what you're doing, but welfare won't like it. Think of the children. They're hurt now with their parents being dead and their aunt running out on them. And they're going to be hurt again if they have to be torn away from you. Please, do me a favor. Ask welfare's permission. And suppose they say no. I'll take them and, and afterward you tell welfare where they've gone and, and how happy they are. I know it'll be all right. Come along, kids. Get your things. Come on. Come on. I'll be coming up to see you in a day or two, Mary. I hope I won't be bringing bad news. after this message from DuPont. Here is a baby, a tiny little human being. All too soon, he'll be a man. And if he's to be a normal, healthy adult, all of him, his legs, his arms, his body, grows at the same time. Look at his hands. Today, they're tiny, but big enough to do what he wants them to do. Tomorrow, they will have grown in strength and coordination for the purposes of tomorrow. Swinging a baseball bat or learning how to write. And the day after that, they will have developed until they can do almost anything he asks of them. So it is with the growing nation. As it grows in size and population, all its parts grow with it. 
When our country was a baby, four-fifths of the people lived on scattered farms. So the little red schoolhouse was adequate for the neighborhood children's needs. Today, even the largest schools are hardly large enough to accommodate the tremendous enrollment. In 1800, dirt roads were good enough for local transportation. Today, huge superhighways link the country from coast to coast. The good old general store supplied those early farm communities with their limited needs. Everything from harnesses to Lindsay Woolsey. Today, supermarkets do what the old general store could never do. Meet the needs of hundreds of customers every day. Manufacturing, too, was small in those days because its chief function was to provide people with the few things they could not make for themselves. DuPont's first mill, for instance, was set up to provide America with good black powder for defense and to answer the needs of her pioneers, getting food and protecting their homes. But to meet the increasing demands of a growing nation, DuPont, like so many other manufacturing companies, grew too. Until today, it is doing what no small company can do, creating the essential basic materials which small companies use to make finished products for your better living. Materials like plastics, man-made fibers, moisture-proof cellophane, and many more things a big and growing nation must have. As America continues to grow, it needs large companies like DuPont, with big resources in manpower and equipment, to continue the job of bringing you an ever-increasing number of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, back to the DuPont Theater. Oh, no. Get me a smaller bowl. Oh, that's the ticket. Easy, laddie. Two shakes and I'll have your ears sticking out as proud as you please. Guess that's in the way you. And be still, because I can't get proper aim. You know, sir. But an art film is good you. What is he babbling about? Uh, he wants to know what you're doing. Anyone can see that I'm cutting his hair. Uh, but why do you use the bow? The bow is to get a nice, clean, rounded effect. It sort of uh, steers the scissors. But maybe you better let me. I always cut his hair. All right, go ahead. Yes, lady. And don't call me lady. I'm no lady. Call me mom. Okay, mom. That sounds like Annie's car. you enjoy your ride yesterday with Fuller? I'm sure you asked Fuller that already. What did he have to say? Well, it looks like you've been feeding an army. Mom, what are you up to? What do you mean, what am I up to? I just had my breakfast and I'm doing the dishes. You never even eat breakfast. Bless you, Wesley. Bless me. <laughs> What's that? Boy, meet your sister Annie and your brother-in-law Wesley. Annie, meet your three brothers. This is Juan. He's 13. He speaks English as good as we do. This is Felipe. He's nine. He's learning more English every day. Oh, they're fine-looking boys. Oh, bless you, Felipe. And this is Pepe. All he knows is one word. New York. Say New York for your sister, Pepe. He still don't feel like saying it. They speak Spanish like a top. Oh, uh, 
Uh, uh, ¿Cómo está usted? Muy bien. ¿Y usted? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mother, why did you say brothers? Because they were homeless. So I took them in. That's fantastic. Did you think that's fantastic? You should see their appetite. <laughs> Colossal is the word for that. Mother. Uh, boys, I tell you what, why don't we go for a walk while Mother Dolan explains. Come on. <clears throat> Mother, tell me about it. From the beginning, I've got three boys and I'm going to bring them up. And that's all there is to it. That's impossible. Why is it impossible? Here I am, a strong-bodied woman, and here are three boys that are in desperate need. Mother, listen. Last night, when I went to bed, I didn't lie awake one minute. When my head hit the pillow, I fell sound asleep. Well, because you were exhausted, that's why. Because my heart was at peace. That's the real reason why. Do you know why I can't enjoy the country? Because it's so quiet. All I do is think. And I think how little there is for me to do. How little I'm needed. You talk about the trees, the birds, the scenery. But ask yourself, were trees people? The boys have made it worthwhile. Mother. The welfare agency won't let you keep them. I don't know why not. They'll say you're too old. And they'll have other reasons. And just think how it'll break your heart when they take them away from you. I won't let them. I won't let them take them away. Okay, here we are. Come on, boys. Are you ready, Ann? Talbot's a wedding. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, dear. Bye, Mother Dolan. Goodbye. Bye, boys. Bye. Bye, Bye fellas. Bye. Bye. Can I finish Pepe's haircut now, lady? Sure you can finish it. And don't be calling me lady. Call me mom. Mom. And if I die before I wake. And if I die before I wake. I pray the Lord my soul to take. I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. 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 <laughs> Wedding of the green. He says sing wearing of the green, please. I know what he says. I know a little bit of Spanish myself. <laughs> oh, Patty dear, and did you hear the news that's going round? The shamrock is forbid by law to grow on Irish ground. <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. Dolan? Why, Timothy, aren't you the former one? Come in, come in. <laughs> well, and what do you bring? Bad news, I guess. That's right. The welfare sent me to pick up the boys. Well, that's what I feared. I've been hoping and praying, hoping and praying. For some grand loophole that the boys could hop through so you could keep them, I suppose. For a miracle. I know that now. Did you tell him what a fine mother I'd make for the boys? Well, I did, and so did your daughter and her husband. They told the welfare how knowledge you were for your warm heart, and especially when it comes to children. Oh, they did. And what did welfare say? Here. They gave me this pamphlet. It's all here. I'll read it to you. <clears throat> Generally, adoptive parents should be between 30 and 40 years of age. Occasionally, after careful inspection, some exception can be made to this rule. Exception, it says. If possible, parents and their adopted children should share the same religious belief. They're Catholic, same as myself. And be of the same national origin. Well, Ireland and Puerto Rico, they're both islands. We got that in common. The parents should have adequate financial security. I got a pension and a savings account and some insurance. I'm well provided. 
The parents must have a stable marriage, devoid of any serious emotional conflict. What does that mean? It means that you can't keep the children because you're not married. I'm a mature, wise woman, and I know my way about with young ones. It was myself that told the lady of the welfare the same thing. But she says it takes a father as well as a mother to raise children. Well, what would they have me do? Chase after a man and keep pestering him until he says yes? Well, I won't do it. What do they think I am? A flippity gibbet? Why not? Just what do you mean by that, why not? No. No, you don't. If you're asking me, Mary Dolan, the answer's no. Big N, big O, no. Timothy. Timothy, you're alone and I'm alone. Alone, we're old and miserable. Don't be so quick at saying no. Consider. Soon you'll be retiring and you'll be getting up in the morning with no job to go to. Day and night, you'll be home. Well, uh, uh, I'll go fishing on Long Island. <laughs> How many days a week can a body go fishing? Time will hang as heavy on your hands as it has on mine till I found the boys. They fill my life. They can fill yours, too. Mary, is it for the boys you do this? Not altogether, Tim. You see, we're much alike. And there's so few like us left. Why not finish it out together? You know, I think maybe you're right at that. You're a wonderful woman, Mary Dolan. And the honor is mine. Oh, Timothy. Bless you. Boys. 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 John, I've got some wonderful news for you. But it's got to wait. I want you to run over and get Annie and her husband. Come on, hurry up. Pepe! Felipe! Come out of there. Brother, are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. I couldn't be better. Oh, Sit down over there with the other children. <clears throat> Mr. Moriarty and I have an announcement to make. Mary Kelly Dolan, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Kelly, has pledged her troth to Timothy Moriarty. Mother, what are you trying to say? What she's trying to tell you is that we're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, I think that's a wonderful idea. Oh, and the way I feel about it, we're not losing a mother, we're gaining a father. <laughs> uh -huh. And three brothers. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that, fellas? Oh, boy. I like it very much, very much. And you, young fella, what have you got to say? New York. This was a Don W. Sharp, Warren Lewis production. He has met the challenges of the football field. Now, off the gridiron, he must face the toughest test of his life. Next week on the DuPont Theater, watch Decision for a Hero, starring John Erickson and Joan Evans. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs>